map hands. Today we're looking at how we can bring geotagged photos into QGIS. This is part of a series and the goal is to make a web map from this particular project. So as ever, let's not delay and dive right in. So this is what our final output is going to look like after we've completed the series and you can see I've got clustered points here over Edinburgh where the recent FOSS4G UK conference took place and each of these points is somewhere where I took a photo. So you can click on here, you can see I've got a reward for going to the conference and it's a plum porter, very nice. And if you click on one of the clustered points, you can see the conference venue. Excellent place to have a conference right next to the Scottish Houses of Parliament. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, that's our ultimate goal. But the first thing we need to do is take some pictures. So our first step is going to be setting up our phone to make sure that we can take geotagged photos. And in order to do that, I'm going to go into the settings, which will be right here. And then I'm going to go to my location settings, which is down here. And I'm working on an Android phone, but there will be similar options with a iPhone as well. And I'm going to turn my location on. Now you'll notice that the mode at the top there is set to high accuracy. That means it's using both the GPS and also Wi-Fi signals in order to determine the location, mobile networks, Bluetooth, etc. So that means that I'm going to get a much better location than just using GPS or just using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. So I've set that up. That's all good. Uh, let's go back. And then in my camera settings, if I open up my camera, you're not going to see an awful lot. But I'm going to go to the settings button. And then from there, I'm going to hit more. And I'm going to scroll down and you see the save location. If I turn that on, that is good. Okay. And then when I go to take a picture, you'll see down in the bottom right there, there is a little pin. If your phone is searching for a signal, that pin will actually be a little satellite. And you should wait until the pin drops until you start taking photographs. That's how to get the best location accuracy. So while I was out in Edinburgh at the conference, I did a little bit of exploring and I've taken all the photographs. I have tidied them up, chosen the best ones and put them into their own folder. And from that, I will be well poised to make my QGIS project. Here we are in QGIS and I've started a new project. I've been working a lot in the British National Grid recently, so you can see my EPSG down here. I've set that to be the default. Um, I'm just going to switch that to a web based. There we go. Pseudo Mercator. That's what I'm after. So Pseudo Mercator is often used in websites. And as this is going to be a website eventually, I'm going to stick the EPSG to that to begin with. I'd also like to know where things are happening. So I'm going to add a base map as well. And for that, I'm going to go with OpenStreetMap Monochrome. If you are lacking these XYZ base maps or the XYZ tiles, uh, you can see my other video here, which will use Class Carlson's excellent Python code in order to load all of these up into your browser. Here we have the world. You can see it's nice and almost square because of the web Mercator projection and we're all set. Now what I'd like to do is bring those photos in and make them be points on a map. So how can we do that? Whenever I'm working in queue and I come up with the question, how can I do that? My first port of call is to go to plugins. And so if I go up to manage and install plugins, I'll connect to the plugin repository and I'd like to go to all and I'm going to search for photos and you can see here we've got one called import photos now I checked out a few of these and import photos looks like the uh, most suitable for what we'd like to do and over on the right hand side you can see a description of how this works so that's good I've got that plugin installed already and I've turned it on so let's close out of this and you will have a couple of little new tools on your toolbar 
These are from the Import Photo plugin. So if I go now to Import Photos, it's going to ask for an input folder location, an output file location, and a style if we have a style. So I'm going to browse to the input folder location, and that is going to be in here. I've got all my photos already in the for upload photo folder. So I'll select that folder and it's going to ask for an output location. So that location I'm going to keep as the same and it's going to save it as an Esri shape file. I'm fine with that, no problem at all. So I'll call this my photos and let's hit save. Okay, so you could check this button that only imports photos that are in the canvas extent. So if you had an area that you were interested in and only the photos from that area, you could do that. I'm not going to, I just want to bring all of them in. So I'll hit OK. And off it goes. Look at that. Very speedy. The import is completed and we've got 18 photos added without error. Two are skipped because they're missing locations, which is interesting. We'll investigate further later on. So I'm going to hit OK. The task is complete and my photos are loaded. So over here in the layers panel, you can see I've now got a group called My Photos. And within that, I've got a shapefile called My Photos. So I'm going to zoom to that layer. And there they are, all in Edinburgh. Excellent news. So this looks like it's worked very well. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in a little bit of housekeeping, I don't need a group for my photos. They can just be on their own. So I'm just going to drag them out of that group and then delete that group and put my open street map on the bottom. And here's my photos. Now, if you want to inspect your photos, you can use this button up at the top, click photos, and we'll get the crosshairs. And if I click on here, you can see it opens up that photograph. It'll tell me what date it was taken, what time, and what the layer is called. You can also cycle through the photos that you've taken, which is quite useful. And you can see in the background, it's highlighting the locations of these. So they'll turn yellow. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that the photo symbology so the point symbology for these is okay, but it kind of fades into my background map. So I might want to change that. And I'm just going to go to my photos here, double click on that. And you can see that it's built up of a number of different simple markers. Now, rather than messing around with these, I'm just going to set them to no symbols and then go back to a single marker. And you can see how it reverts to a very simple marker. I like the color blue, so I'm going to make this blue. And in terms of opacity, I'm just going to open up the layer rendering and make it 85%. And I'm just trying to think that when this is on a web map, it's going to be quite important that these really stand out. And you can see them quite easily here, so that's quite good. Um, and if I zoom in, we do have some that are on top of each other. That might be a bit of a problem, but we'll tackle that later on. So this is looking all right. Now what I'm going to do is save my project. And I'm just going to go to save as, save it in the same folder and I'll call it my photo map. Great. Now, if you remember, we had two photos that could not be added. So they don't have a geolocation associated with them. So I need to do a little bit of investigating and find out which ones have been missed off. So I've been through my photos and I've had a look which ones were missing. And one of them was right at Dynamic Earth. And it's quite a nice picture, so I definitely like that one on. So what I'm going to do is select my photos layer and I'm going to start editing. So I'll toggle that editing and I'm going to add a point feature. I think that point was around about there. That's where the actual location is. And I can give it a name. So I'm going to call this one globe. And then in terms of the date, it was probably on Saturday 
the 21st. We'll go for that in terms of time. Now you'll notice when I click on the time, it brings up a date window. That's not very useful, so I'm just going to leave that blank for now. Long and lat, I'm not too bothered about, nor any of these. And let's have a look what else we've got. We've got a title, I'll call it globe. And comments, path, relative path, and timestamp. OK. So I'm just going to fill in the very basics for now and OK that. And you'll see that we've got this added. Now, because I haven't given it a path, it doesn't know where that photograph is. And so if I open up the attribute table, you can see that all the other items in here are a lot more filled in. Now I've got my globe in here and it's called globe.jpg, I think the photo. And if I scroll across, you can see that all the other ones have something called a relative path. Now if I open this up a little bit more, we can see what that relative path looks like. It's got the dash, the dot dash forward slash for upload and then the file name. So this path is relative to where the file is stored or where our project is. So I'm going to copy one from above, paste it in down there, and then I'm going to give it the name of my photo file, which I think is globe. I'm going to double check that in a second. So it should be globe. Let's go back to my photos. And let's have a look. It is called globe.jpg. And you can see from here, here's where my project is, here's where the file is, and that is where my videos are. Oh, videos? Photos. That's where my photos are. So Q needs to know that relative path name, and now that I've updated it, theoretically, we should be able to see that picture when I click on it. So I'm going to stop editing, or save those edits, close out of this, and then I'm going to use this camera click again. No image path found. Hmm. That's not very helpful. So let's open up again and see what we might have missed. So if I go over here, uh, we've got an absolute path here as well. So perhaps it's something to do with that. So I'll copy one from above. I'll paste it in down here. And let's have a look. If I change from summit to globe, click out of that, save my edits, close and stop editing. Now if I use the camera click, and there it is. So what the import photos was looking for was the absolute path, but it is very useful to have the relative path in there. And you'll see why when we come to making our web map. Now, the other problem that we had was that when I tried to update the time, it was coming up as a date field. So I'm just going to go into my photos and I'm going to have a look at the attributes form. And which one was it? It was time. Now, if I click on time here, you can see the widget type is date time and the field format is set to date. Now, I don't want that. I would like that to be time. OK, that's. And now when I go into my attribute table and I try and update the time, let's turn on editing, click in here and I can update the time. Now I'm not sure what time I took this photo, but let's go for 11 in the morning on the Saturday. That looks good. Okay. So I'm going to save my edits. And we're all good on that front. Excellent. Now I have my photo map. I've got a couple more adjustments to make. I've been inspecting this for a little while now. And when we were over at the castle, I had this particular picture taken from the castle walls, but I had a roof over us. And so I think the picture was taken from around here. But due to bad accuracy, it's put us in Argyle House. That's no use. So I'm going to spend a bit of time tidying these up. And then I've got my photos geotagged, brought into a QGIS project. Now in the next video, we are going to have a look at how we can create a local website from this particular project. 
So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe and please like the video if you enjoyed it. Had some really great comments, uh, lots of subscribers recently, so if we can keep that going, that would be awesome. And if you feel like this is a little above your head, don't forget that you can always jump over to Udemy and do my introductory course on QGIS. It does need a little update, so I'll be doing that very soon. If you'd like to check the video description below, if you click on show more, you can get a 50% discount on that particular course. All right, thanks a lot for watching and happy mapping.